Hi, I'm Paris, and I wanted to invite you to come along with me over the next 12 weeks. I've been invited to join a weight loss intervention study hosted by the DNA testing company 23andMe, which I did my original test with them three or four years ago. And they finally found a study that I'm perfect for, losing weight. Epic review guys. So it was just after Christmas that I got an email from 23andMe asking if I'd be interested in participating in the study. They told me that I would be assigned to one of three groups and all the people who are in the study have had their DNA testing done with 23andMe. So they want to correlate based on different markers and genes and things they see in your DNA. If you are overweight and you try to lose weight, are you more likely to be successful depending on your DNA? If you go on a low carb diet, low fat diet, or increase your exercise and activity. I was hoping for one of those that I could cut out the sugars or cut out the fats, but no, they put me in the get out there, get rid of those calories the old fashioned way, burn them off. Apparently there are 100,000 of us in this study, so this will be the largest study of its type ever, and no one in the study is being compensated. The only benefit we derive from willingly share what we have so much of is that when the studies are done at the end, before they're released to the public, we get to look in and see what the findings are. As I mentioned, I was assigned to the exercise and activity group. In the instructions I received, I was told to eat a healthy diet with a link to some sort of generic guidelines about what that is, but not to go out of my way to really change my diet a lot from how it is now. They don't wanna have additional variables they have to try to compensate for. Instead, with my continuing on my reasonably healthy diet, I think, that I have, they want to know if I follow their activity guidelines and boost my exercise and activity to the level they suggest, how much weight loss I might experience over 12 weeks of sticking to this plan. Now since the first of the year, this is one of my New Year's resolutions, I've gone out for a 30 minute walk every morning. As soon as I get the kids out the door, I go out and take that mile and a half walk. So it's not really fast walking. I'm doing about three miles an hour. Now I'm afraid my walking isn't going to qualify because they say that moderate activity is such as brisk walking. You'll know when you're in the moderate intensity range if you can talk but not sing while you're active. Well, I can't sing anyway. If I exercise enough, will I be able to sing? That would be nice. But when I'm walking, since it is a half hour, I tend to daydream. I know I slow down then, or oh, there's an Instagram notification. I gotta take a look at that as I'm walking. So it's definitely not brisk walking. I don't get out of breath. So in addition to my morning walk seven days a week, I'm going to have to make a concerted effort to do 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity or 75 minutes a week of vigorous aerobic activity. That one, I think you can't breathe while you're doing it. No, no, that's not what they say. Vigorous activity includes running and aerobic dancing. You're in the vigorous activity range if you have to stop for a breath every few seconds. Well, it is. You can't breathe, okay. They recommend doing a combination of both vigorous and moderate aerobic activity and to spread it out over the week. So I'm thinking the surest way of making sure that I get at least this amount of activity is to go to our local YMCA, which we're members of, and get on those machines. Most of them, wherever you hold on to them, it'll measure your heartbeat and tell you what your heart range should be in for this type of activity. So I think that's what I'm going to do for the next 12 weeks. Now they also want me to do strength training at least twice a week, free weights, weight machines, rock climbing or heavy gardening. Well, any gardening that I do is gonna be heavy gardening. So I think I'll do that at the YMCA as well. They have machines for all kinds of doing, exercising different muscles in your body with a large variety of weights. And fortunately, they're saying if you're not used to doing this much physical activity, uh, it may seem like a lot. You can start small 10 minutes per day of light intensity aerobic and work your way up. And then they're going to have me fill out a survey weekly telling them in more detail exactly how much of this type of activity I've been doing as well as what I've been eating. I did the first survey today and it's interesting they throw in some other questions you wouldn't quite expect. And to consider whether I prefer to exercise solo or in a group. Yeah, I think I'll do it by myself. Now, for the walking every morning, it would be nice if I had a friend in the neighborhood to do the walk with. Probably walk even more slowly then, but I suppose we could spur each other on to make it at least light aerobic activity. 
So that's all they asked me to do. I guess I'll be heading over to the Y tomorrow morning after my walk and get started on this. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the survey they're having me do weekly in case you're interested in seeing the kind of questions they ask in a study like this. So some of the questions on this week's survey. Um, how often did you drink a serving of water, coffee or tea, sugar sweetened beverages, alcoholic beverages during the past week? How often did you eat one serving of fresh fruit, nuts, seeds or nut butter, dark chocolate, baked goods, full fat dairy, low fat dairy, boiled or baked potatoes, beans or legumes, fresher cooked vegetables, tofu, white meat, processed meat, red meat. And about activity. How long do you spend walking? How many times a week? Uh, strengthening physical activity, light to moderate, vigorous physical activity, and how far around are your hips and your waist and your weight, and what's your weight loss goal, primary motivation. When you're in the mood for a snack, do you go for sweet or salty? Why do you avoid dairy? Because I told them I avoid dairy. Which oil do you cook with? Do you eat when you feel sad, stressed, or anxious? To which my answers are yes, yes, and yes. I don't do drugs, I rarely drink, but there's a reason it's called comfort food. So you can expect to see some posts on my observations and how I'm dealing with all this over the next 12 weeks on our Instagram account, at Epic Review Guys. And I'll be back here in a couple weeks to give you an update both on how the study's going and how I'm doing. I'm hoping I'm gonna be telling you, hey, I lost five pounds. You probably aren't going to hear me say, hey, I've taken up rock climbing, but I will do my best to stick to this. See you on the next review. Shopping is easy when you know what to buy. At Epic Review, guys, we give to a try. What does the fox buy? Nobody knows. But before he goes shopping, he watches our videos.